uh, harmony.intuit.com. Now let me introduce uh, Darrell Rabinowitz. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us today. I'm the design strategist for the Harmony Design System and I help teams across Intuit's small business group design for the QBO ecosystem. Um, and if any of you are curious as to what a design system is, just think about Apple's human interface guidelines. When you go to any Apple product or site, it all looks and feels and behaves like a family. And that's what we've really tried to do with the QuickBooks ecosystem. So let me take you into our Harmony Toolkit. Um, I'll give you folks a brief intro and then we'll take a little deep dive into how you might start designing your app to work within the system. So this toolkit, as we said, is available on, at harmony.intuit.com. Everyone can go to it and see it. It basically has guidance for making product design decisions. It has design principles, visual styles, patterns, and Photoshop downloads for the web, for iOS, and Android. And depending on what stage of design you're at, different parts of the toolkit may be more relevant. So for example, if we go into the design principles section, these will help you make a design decision. Um, so it establish a familiar resemblance means from one part of your app to the next part of the app, you want it to be kind of the same. These design principles really just help us create this cohesive experience. But we also have pieces like our visual framework where you can see our color palette or, for example, our typography system. And I know it's small on the screen, but you can see the fonts that we use and the sizes and when to use it, et cetera. Um, and then we have patterns which are typified by say everyone knows what a global header is, a pattern kind of describes when to use something, how it looks, and when to use it. But I think it's, it'll be a lot easier for you guys to understand the value of the design toolkit if we take an actual design problem and see how using the toolkit could help you. So think about this. In QuickBooks, we needed a way to see all of our customers um, and easily look from customer to customer. And we also wanted to be able to quickly create a transaction for each customer. And so if you dive into that, you need to think about how do we see all of our customers? Um, how do we see their details? How do I take action on that customer, like create a new one or do something for that customer? That's a real lot to think about when you're designing your app. So I start by thinking about the content that's going on the screen and the kind of screen itself. And I'm going to talk about both of those, but first I'm going to start with the kind of screen the content might go on. And for that, I'll go to the layout section of the toolkit. And here you can see again, we highlight our design principles because it just really helps us focus on the right design decisions. Um, so we talk about our, all the different pieces that are part of the structure of the QuickBooks ecosystem and why they're important. And I'm scrolling because now I can look at the different types of layout examples that we have. And so right off the bat, you can see that there's a default layout. I call it default layout, layout with a stage. And if I hit that link, it, it describes for this is our default layout and it says when to use this page site. So use it when, um, you know, for all top level landing pages and when you might have some insights to show. And if I think back to our problem about showing all of my customers, well, I might want to see which customer has an overdue in, in, invoice or which customer has paid me. And this, this page type might actually work for that. But I don't know, let me see what else is available. Oops, sorry, I went back one too much. So now down we have the split view, or it says split view with a stage. If I click on that, I can see I use the split view when I have a list of items and when each item has a lot of detail. 
if I'm scrolling down, I can kind of see an example of what it looks like. And I can I can see that hmm, it looks like this might be also right for my customers, right? So, what did we end up doing in QuickBooks? Well, I'm going to take you there. We can see. So, if I go to Customers in QuickBooks, this is a default layout page. It has the stage area at the top, like we just talked about, where I can see in insights. I can actually see that I have 10 overdue invoices, customers with 10 overdue invoices, and I can see my customer list. Um, well, what happens if I want to see more details on that customer? So I'll hit this customer. And now I'm actually at a split view page like we talked to before. And I can go in between customer and customer and see all of their transactions. So you can see how the toolkit kind of guided us into how we made these product decisions. Um, but what happens if I want to create a task for, um, what, what if I wanted to create an invoice for this customer, Durelvis? Well, you can see I've got some buttons up here. Um, so if I, how would I know which of these buttons to use? And how would I know that this is a table that I want to use? Back in my toolkit, I can actually search for patterns. It works pretty well. I can see tables. So in this pattern, it describes the different modes that we have for tables, and there's a lot of detail around what constitutes a table, how a table should work, how a table should behave, what's the default mode, how to filter, how to take actions. There's a lot of, of, of details around how things would work so that when the user goes from page to page, screen to screen, and even device to device, they can understand that they don't have to learn a new interaction on every page. So back at our customer list, you can see we have a table and all the rules around how this table works from the filtering here to the hover state are all described in the in the tables pattern. So let's say I, I know I'm going to take an action, right? That we said that that was part of our main problem. So, well, what buttons would I use? In the buttons pattern, there's actually a diagram that shows all of our different kinds of buttons when one would be primary, a primary version, a secondary version, and which type to use in which situation. It describes when to use a primary button, that there's a menu button and a combo button, and I know there's a lot to read, but we also have very distinct use cases for each type. There's visual design guidelines for each type of button. And there's even um, stuff around the hierarchy and the placement of the button so that we know we all, if there's one button, we always put it in the center. If there's two buttons, we put our main button on the right, et cetera. This will help us make decisions. So back to our page that we said before, well, I can see right now that I've got a primary menu button because when I tap on it, I've got a menu and a secondary button. Um, so if I click on create an invoice, you'll notice that a whole new page type comes down. This is what we call a trouser. And if I go back to my patterns, my layout pattern, I can see that trousers are designed to be used when we're creating, editing, or viewing a transaction and when there's a complex form. And the reason that we've designed what we call the trouser, it's shorthand for transaction browser. The reason that we've described it this way is because typically our users 
need to be isolated when they're creating these complex transactions and they don't want a lot of distraction. So the trouser kind of bring, keeps you, it lets you perform your task like we might just create this invoice, which I'll do right now for us really quickly. And do you think I should pay myself $100 an hour? I think so. Um, and if I save and send it, I can send myself an invoice, etc. And the great thing about the trouser is that when it's done, when you're done creating that transaction, you're back where you started. You don't leave your context. It's really helpful for people so that I was, I was at this customer, Dorelvis, and I'm still at this customer, Dorelvis. And the, the toolkit, the pattern, would help me make that decision as to how that trouser should work, what goes in the header, and how it actually behaves, how the trousers browse back and forth. So back to our design problem. We know we want to use a default layout on one page, and we want to go to a split view layout on other pages. The containers we would use would be tables. We would use buttons. And when we make a, a transaction, that would go to a trouser. It sounds complicated, but everything is laid out in the toolkit. But um, if I was really making an app, I might have to figure out, well, is that really going to work? Um, how, you know, I, I might want to actually mock it up and prototype it. Well, in our downloads and tools section, this is a big load, but you can see we have web downloads, iOS downloads, and Android downloads. These are where all the elements we just talked about, we have layered, layered Photoshop files, and you can grab all of the elements so that you could mock, make your own mocks and uh, make your own prototypes. For example, this is just a it's, it's just a, a ping of the PSD file, and here's a mock of the trouser. So if you not only wanted to use this container for the trouser, but also our form design and the header, all you have to do is go to the downloads and pick up the PSD files. And these PSD files actually contain all sorts of visual information. Here's, here's a, a PSD file of all of our different tables. So you're not starting from scratch. There's elements for you to just pick up and use and to create your apps so that they're very, very integrated into the QBO ecosystem. So using the toolkit can really help you create an app that not only solves your user goals, but works cohesively in the QBO ecosystem. And because the toolkit is actually a living document that evolves as we add more and more use cases and more and more folks into the ecosystem, let us know how you're using it and how it's working for you. That's all I got. Great. I'm going to kind of throw a little bit of a curveball here at Durrell. And now that uh, everyone has seen what harmony.intuit.com is, many of them might not have known before. And now that they know, what is your recommended approach? Like, where, where do they use this? What, what situations uh, will they start using this? And keep in mind that we've got some large companies out there with development teams, you know, in, in 10, 20, 30, or more people. And we've got some developers out there that, uh, you know, are one, two, maybe three person shop sort of thing. So how do you recommend uh, they use this? And, and at what point should they start engaging? Like, what's the situation? Well, um, I think every person, every company, whether you're a big company or a small company, should start by considering your users and follow a user-centered design process. Um, and um, you might actually have design principles of your own that you follow. And I would start by looking at our principles. It's under Harmony 101. I would start by looking at our design principles and your principles and see where there are, um, you know, where there's matching and agreements. Um, as a designer, I actually sketch and draw things out and I would look right away at our visual framework. This is where we have our very tactical layout. 
visual things like color and illustration just to help us sketch to make sure that we're keeping within the system. Um, so that's the starting point. And if you're a developer and you don't have a designer, actually I think the toolkit is a great resource for you because you don't have to make a decision on what color to use for an element because we've got it right here. All the colors that you want to use with their hex codes. We have all the fonts that you might want to use are all laid out for us so you can figure out right off the bat even if your app doesn't doesn't behave like a QuickBooks app you can apply our look and feel to your existing app. So that's sometimes a really good place for folks to start, especially if they don't have a design team. As you go forward, that's where I would really dig into some of the more complex patterns, like our different layout choices and how to create a form, um, what to do about communication and error states. And some of the, the patterns in the toolkit actually go from very high level, like we talked about layouts, down to um, a component, so an error message, a button, um, a select, drop down, etc. So you can kind of see how all the pieces work together. Awesome. Thank you for answering that. And thank you for uh, coming in and presenting uh, for us today.